Many people have reviewed that this film has a storyline like trash, but some of them do not understand this film's storyline perfectly. Therefore, I will package this recap this time in simple language that makes you know better and say this is the best sequel ever in the world of cinema. When Korra and the warriors returned to Planet Velt after ensuring their victory, or at least that's what they believed, they did not know that Commander Noble had actually been saved and recovered from his injuries by the royal doctors. After undergoing intensive care for several days, Commander Noble finally regained consciousness. The first thing he ordered his deputy was to direct their ship to Planet Belt to capture Scargiver or Korra. Upon receiving the order, the deputy immediately contacted the unit that had previously been on standby on Planet Belt and ordered the soldiers to prepare for their arrival in five days. Here, what he did not know, the entire unit there had actually been massacred by Korra, leaving only one young soldier who eventually switched sides with the villagers. Thus they ultimately learned about the attack plan that Commander Noble's armada would carry out in a few days. Meanwhile, Korra and the warriors who had arrived on Planet Velt immediately brought the good news where they believed that Commander Noble had been killed in the previous battle and said that the villagers no longer needed to worry. Unfortunately, at the same time, the young soldier informed them of the new info he had just received, where it turned out that Commander Noble had survived, and his armada planned to attack the village within five days. Knowing this, General Titus immediately asked the village chief to gather all the villagers because it meant that the war against Commander Noble's armada was inevitable, and they had to prepare for the worst possible scenarios. Without further ado, General Titus, who is indeed a strategic expert, immediately devised a defense plan and asked the villagers to cooperate. Men and women alike were invited to take roles in defending their village. Not only that, but they would also train the villagers over those five days to use weapons and anything else they could because they clearly needed as many troops as possible to fight Commander Noble's armada. While the others were resting, Korra, who had grown close to Gunner, finally told him about who she really was. We were then shown a more detailed story about Korra's past. In the past, Korra was assigned to be an elite royal guard personally appointed by her adoptive father, Belisarius. Under the influence of the princess, the king of Motherworld, who at that time was conquering various territories, began to change his views and plan to end the era of expansion by symbolically destroying the royal warship. However, General Belisarius had a different opinion because he was unwilling to see the kingdom end its hard-earned power that he had built by conquering so many planets. Belisarius then planned a rebellion against the royal family and ordered Korra to kill the princess. Initially, Korra thought she would be under the protection of her adoptive father after successfully seizing the royal throne. However, the opposite happened. Korra was made a scapegoat and accused of orchestrating the murder of the royal family. This also explains why Korra became the number one fugitive in the Mother World Kingdom, forcing her to change her name from Arthalase to Korra. To this day, only a few people know her true identity. Back to the story, the villagers finally began preparations according to General Titus's plan. The first step was to gather their valuable harvest in one place to use it as a shield and a bargaining tool with Commander Noble, knowing that his forces also needed food supplies to meet their logistical needs. Tasks that usually took several weeks had to be completed in just three days, requiring all villagers to work multiple times harder than usual. After completing the first stage, they began to create a defense strategy by stacking their wheat flour harvest as a shield against bullets. In addition, General Titus dug several trenches for surprise attacks if negotiations did not go as planned. The final preparation involved arming all villagers with various weapons they could gather from the remnants of the soldiers previously killed by Korra. Meanwhile, Korra prepared her long unused and untouched spaceship, hiding it for a surprise attack. On the night before the royal forces were scheduled to arrive, General Titus suggested that the rebel fighters share their backgrounds to build trust among them. To start, General Titus explained his background. In the past, he and his troops were ordered to raise a region that wanted to secede from the Mother World Kingdom, which he refused. However, as a consequence of his decision, he was considered a rebel and punished by watching all his subordinates executed in front of him. Next, Milius told the story of his home, which was similar to the peaceful and safe planet Velt, until the royal army arrived and began colonizing the place. Everyone was then made into forced laborers, while the elderly and the weak were executed. Until one day, the Blood Axe Rebel group appeared and liberated the forced labor camp where Milius was held. Since then, he joined the Blood Axe group and always fought with them to free territories under the kingdom's control. Then, it was Nemesis' turn. In the past, his ancestors were people who spent their entire lives fighting. At one point, they intended to leave behind their warlike traditions and become fishermen in a small area. 
However, that was when the Mother World Kingdom's army came and wiped out nearly everyone, including his child. Since then, he decided to return to fighting and replaced his hand with an ancient artifact of his tribe. That artifact allowed him to wield a fiery sword and eliminate the kingdom's soldiers in stealth. Meanwhile, Tarak recounted that he came from a kingdom that never saw trouble with the Mother World Kingdom. At that time, his father, the king, tried to establish relations with the Mother World Kingdom to avoid conflict. However, this effort resulted in the king's death and the immediate attack on their kingdom by the Mother World Kingdom's armada. Seeing this, his mother ordered Tarak to leave to preserve the royal bloodline, while she chose to die there to defend her honor. Since then, he has become a fugitive, moving from planet to planet to fulfill his duty of preserving the royal lineage. When it was Korra's turn, she did not go into detail about her origins and only mentioned that she was an orphan and a war victim. She was worried that if people knew she was Belisarius' adopted child, the source of all the trouble, she would be even more rejected by everyone. Switching to the royal mothership, Commander Noble, who had begun to recover, immediately took command of the ship. He then asked his subordinates to contact his unit on Planet Velt for an update from there. However, he sensed something odd because he only saw the young soldier and no other soldiers suspecting that his entire unit had actually been killed. If this were true then his plan would have already been known to Korra, so he decided to accelerate his arrival there. In short, the royal mothership began to enter the orbit of Planet Velt, causing the villagers to run around in panic. From inside the ship, Commander Noble saw how the farmers had cleverly prepared by stacking the wheat flour he needed among the houses. He realized that this was undoubtedly a plan made by General Titus because the farmers couldn't devise such a strategy at that level. Based on this, Commander Noble, aware that he needed to minimize damage, was forced to come himself, deploy heavy artillery, and send a team of elite troops to kidnap women and children to use as hostages secretly. At this point, Korra openly welcomed him, knowing that Commander Noble's purpose in coming there was to capture her and began negotiating. Korra agreed to follow Commander Noble's orders as long as he left the place alone. Unbeknownst to Korra, Commander Noble had ordered some of his troops to capture the women and children from behind. Gunnar, aware of this plan, realized it was a huge mistake to trust someone like Commander Noble. He took Korra's rifle and sounded the alarm bell as a signal for war. At that moment, one of the villagers shot down one of Commander Noble's ships. Commander Noble, who was well-versed in battle strategies, immediately entered the trenches, where he eliminated everyone there, allowing him to return to the mothership safely. On the other hand, this was precisely Korra's goal, as she took the ship she had previously hidden and used the chaos to pretend to be one of the ships returning to the mothership. Using smoke bombs, she pretended to be one of the victims to get into the emergency hangar and infiltrate the mothership. Meanwhile, General Titus and the others had to fight tooth and nail to hold off the remaining forces of Commander Noble. Nemesis, facing the elite troops, sacrificed himself to protect the women and children. There was a moment of hope when everyone thought they had managed to drive off Commander Noble's forces, but they were gravely mistaken as Commander Noble had deployed many troops and heavy artillery from behind. Seeing this, Milius, a lieutenant from the Blood Axe Rebel Group who did not want the place to be destroyed, ran forward and shot the heavy artillery at close range with an RPG. However, even at this point, the third wave of Commander Noble's troops continued to arrive. Feeling hopeless, Jimmy, initially set up as an amateur robot, appeared in combat mode. For some reason, he sided with the villagers and was shown to be able to eliminate all the enemy troops single-handedly. Meanwhile, after Korad and Gunnar managed to infiltrate the mothership, they took the opportunity to eliminate some troops there. They then divided tasks. Korra would plant a time bomb in the engine room while Gunnar would return to their ship to prepare for escape. Unfortunately, Korra's actions were discovered by a royal soldier on duty there. This escalated the situation, eventually alerting Commander Noble that Korra had infiltrated his mothership. Commander Noble then ordered his men to destroy the village along with the wheat and his troops and to focus on capturing Korra who had infiltrated the ship. Unbeknownst to him, Korra had already planted the bomb in the engine room. On her way back to her ship to escape, Korra was confronted by several elite royal troops. Fortunately, being skilled in combat, she managed to overcome some of the elite forces in this mechanical duel and even took their sword. Eventually, Korra was confronted by Noble's troops. At the same time, the main cannon of the mothership had targeted the village and was ready to fire. However, the mothership was partially destroyed. Korra, still inside, had to face Commander Noble in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Although she struggled to withstand Commander Noble's attacks and was nearly killed, this time was different. When she was cornered, Gunnar helped by stabbing Commander Noble from behind, finally ensuring that Commander Noble was truly dead this time. 
After defeating Commander Noble, Korra hurriedly boarded the makeshift ship with Gunnar, who was in critical condition after being shot by Commander Noble to escape the mothership's explosion. Initially, the ship they boarded had problems and landed abruptly. However, with the help of prayers and strong determination, Korra managed to survive the incident, although unfortunately, Gunnar died from his severe injuries. At the same time, reinforcements from the Blood Axe Rebel Group suddenly appeared to help clear out the remaining enemies on the battlefield. It didn't take long for them to destroy Commander Noble's defensive dominance and finally win the war. After everything ended, Korra and the others were shown conducting a ceremony to honor their fallen comrades. On this occasion, Korra apologized and admitted to everyone that she was Arthlase, the adopted daughter of General Belisarius, and it was her hand that killed the princess of the Mother World Kingdom. However, General Titus denied this and said that the princess, being a miracle, would not die so easily. This provided a fitting reason for them all to unite and search for the princess. If Korra agreed, they were willing to stand with her. Even Jimmy agreed. The film ends.